on, we'll focus on the bottom of the Premier League table. Brentford getting a big win at Luton. Burnley doing the same at Sheffield United. Then Arsenal rounding out the week, the Saturday action with a 2-0 win at Wolves. So many big games to come tomorrow as well, including a huge one at the bottom of the table when Everton and Nottingham Forest do battle. And then to the top again to end of the day, Liverpool against Fulham. We're looking forward to those encounters tomorrow. We've had plenty of goals today, plenty of movement on the Premier League table, including at the very top where Arsenal go a point clear of Manchester City, having played now a game more with that 2-0 win. A 23rd win of the season. Man City 73 and Liverpool in third on 71 <coughs> points. As we've just told you, they will tomorrow. It's their move now. In the bottom half of the Premier League table is where all the action happened today. A big win for Burnley, which means they're just two points behind Luton, who lost to Brentford. Brentford are now 10 points clear of the drop zone with 12 points to play for in the Premier League season. Yeah, like I said, I think we could have scored more goals, especially, especially in the first half. We had some chances from the edge of the box, but um, yeah, we were searching for that uh, for the first goal, and luckily it came with me. And then um, after that, we, I think we controlled it and tried to score the, the second one. Uh, obviously, it came a bit late, but we're really happy with it. Leandro, congratulations, Jamie Redknapp here. Nine goals this season, that's your best return in the Premier League. Just talk us through that one. Was it the sweetest strike? <laughs> Um, not maybe the sweetest, but I, I know I knew I had uh, a small amount of time to hit the ball, and uh, at the moment I see the ball come in front of me, I had to yeah use my toe as well to get it in and get it on target, and it went in yeah really nice. Uh, obviously top bin, so it's really a great goal. The top bins, as we say here, the top right in the top <laughs> bins. Yeah. But how's yeah, the week been? Just give us a flavour of the disappointments that you've had to go through on, on Sunday with that mm. result and then obviously having to travel in Europe. How, how hard has it been for you, you guys as a team, as the manager, and what's been said in this week to make sure that you were ready to get the three points today? I think the resilience has been brilliant. Uh, obviously, it's always tough when you lose games, especially, like I said, after the run we had uh, by w winning so many games. And um, yeah, then it's up to the boys to show a great character and mentality. mentality and uh, I think we, we did that today. And uh, all we can do is uh, focus on ourselves and win our own games, and then we will see what happens. Leandro, yeah, Theo Walker here, mate. I just want to say, as a forward, I'm very proud to see that goal, first of all, because they all count in my eyes. But I just want to talk to you about the defence. There's been a lot of talk about, you know, Gabriel and, and Saliba particularly, but as a, on your perspective as a winger, because the, the amount of work rate that you need to do, and, and Bakari on the other side as well, just mm -hmm. give us an insight to how you're drilled day in, day out with training and the fitness levels, because it starts from the front, and I'm always going to stick with the, the fellow wingers. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I think the boss wants everyone to to sprint back when when yeah there's a counter or whatever, and uh, he wants everyone to yeah get involved in the defensive things. And I think uh, we showed that all over the pitch that everyone's are so uh, hung hungry to to help the team in the defensive line as well to to win those second balls. And I think it's really important in nowadays football. And Leandro, as Jamie said earlier, it's your best goal-scoring season in the, in the Premier League. And it feels like they've been really significant goals that, that you've scored as well. I mean, how much, uh, how much satisfaction can you take from not just the number of goals that you've scored, but when you've scored them and the games that you've scored them in? Yeah, obviously, it's always nice to score goals, and uh, especially in, uh, in big moments. And um, yeah, I'm just happy that I can help the team on, on those moments, uh, that it helps us go forward. And um, yeah, I'm re really pleased with that. And how nice to be travelling back to North London, top of the league again. Yeah, it's great. Uh, like I said, we wanted this win. Uh, we needed a response. I think we did. So uh, let's enjoy this one and uh, look forward to the next game. Leandro, lovely to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Oh well damn! Thank you. Well, the opening goals we say in, in that game, and he does have that knack for scoring big goals in, in big moments. And as well, I'm what's really pleasing in the eye as well. He speaks really well, and I feel like he's a, a player that you can rely on. That's why he's always the, the go-to that Mikel, is, for instance, if he's on the bench, he's the go-to player, and he makes that difference. But he doesn't want to be that go-to player. He wants to be that starting man. But he's he's some big goals and big moments, yeah. and he can he's, he's well trusted in that in that environment. He's he's, he's for me, he's been fantastic. He's Great really signing. Well. Yeah. But mine serves me correctly. I think they were in for Mudrick. 
they not they not, not getting him. Obviously, chose to go to Chelsea and they pay big money for him, and he was probably the second choice. But if you look at the two careers up to now, and there's, listen, there's nothing to say that Mudrik can't go on and still have a good career at Chelsea, but he's been a brilliant signing. He comes out of vital goals. He never complains. If he comes off the bench, he makes an impact. Today, that first goal was so vital. Gives you great width. He's comfortable on the ball. Um, I think he's been a brilliant sign. It just shows you the when, you, when you're looking to add, add players to the squad, you've got to make sure you bring in the right type. And he certainly has, has, has been that player. Such an important goal. And Jesus, as a front man, was obviously heavily involved in it as well, Theo. He was, yeah. And again, we, we spoke about him before, about trying to find his position. And, and he, he, we talked about his position. Done. There he yeah, is. There he's he got is. into that back post there. And he, he's, he gets in the position where it's hard for the full-back to actually spot where he is. And what he uses does really well is use his body. And at times, he does it quite subtly. So the player... You know, he's probably fouled him, if anything, but the thing about Shea is he doesn't give up and he, he gets back up on his feet. People don't really expect his movement because he's so sharp when he's in that 18-yard box. But, you know, the assist, which for me is the touch, first of all, he brings it down. And it's the way how quickly he gets up to then just lay it off to Trossard, who then, should we just call it a slice into the top corner, I suppose. Yeah, but he mentioned <laughs> it. He had, he had a fraction of a second to think about getting the strike. He just moves his feet in the right position. Yeah, look, it, 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 he sort of wafts his foot at it and you can see it here. But you just don't care when these yeah. ones fly in. You know, it's a bit of a swinger, but you can see it there. And that feeling there, and you look yeah. at his face as he runs off. Whoa, that felt really good. And he knew it. And it was a big goal, 44 minutes into the game. Exactly what they needed. And as well, they'll be on the coach on the way home <laughs> debating, did you mean that? And he'll be set 100%. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, £27 million Arsenal spent well, on him. And, and they've, got their, they've got their value out of him. Well, there you they? go, Kit. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know what the figure was, but that is... Bargain. That's an absolute bargain for a tremendous player, technically good, that can nick a goal. It reminds me a little bit with Jota at Liverpool, the mm. same sort of profile of a player that would just come up with big moments, obviously different positions, but just vital to this squad and the depth that you need, especially if you're going to win a title. They might look at that goal. I know obviously Martin Odegaard got the second, but that was a huge moment for their season. And a, but a, a big goal for, for Martin Odegaard as well. Just as, we, as we've said earlier, it could come down to, to goal difference. You feel like there aren't too many more dropped points in this, this title race. So everything is, is going to count. And Martin Odegaard, who's been fantastic for Arsenal this season, getting on the, the score sheet. Oh, he's, been, he's got everything Arsenal ticking from day one. His pressing is... You know, he's, he's been captain for a reason and he's not the sort of typical captain you think of who talks a lot. But what he does really well, he gets into the positions where he can affect the game and the goal tallies for himself this season as well. He, 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 just is how clever this is here. It gets a bit of luck, of course, coming off the defender there. But again, he puts himself in that position and the, the goals, again, important goals, big moments. He's, you tend to look at Odegaard as a player that you're going to sort of build towards. And this, and this team definitely built their team around them right now, I mm. believe. Yeah, and, he's had, and the, the goals are, are just taken off this season as well. That's something that he's, he's really added to, to his all-round game, James. Yeah, I mean, last year he was fabulous. And that midfield of Partey, uh, Odegaard and, and Xhaka worked extremely well. There was no real problems in there. It was only at the end when it just sort of started to fall apart. But he was magnificent last year. And I felt that was, you know, this perform the performances. And when you're the captain, it, there's a player. Because of the pressure, you know, you, he'll be feeling it. There'll be question marks about the team, the character. Are Arsenal going to bottle it again? It's important that you just get those three points. And he'll know that right now and just quietens everybody, puts the onus and the pressure back on everyone else. Another opportunity on Wednesday to get another three points and put the pressure on Man City and Liverpool. That's all you can do right now. But the man, the, the captain, the leader, I've been so impressed with him. I just think he's, a, he's got such a great football brain. Whenever he's on it, the game sort of stands still. He never panics, always makes the right pass. He's been a brilliant signing. Theo, you asked Leandro Trossard earlier about that, that defence, about the sort of collective responsibility for keeping clean sheets. It's another one for Arsenal. It's their sixth successive clean sheet, which is a club record mm. in, the, in the Premier League for them. They did, away from home rather, but it, there is a... There were some slightly nervy moments, but again, they showed how resilient they, they could be. It's, it's one of those, Saliba was definitely missed towards the end of the season, but mm. it's that difference we're not used to talking about Arsenal. I remember my experiences when we played, um, you know, the defence, we, we always would concede. Um, so we'd have to score two or three to win a game. But this defence, there was a, some scary times at times, but Rea here, again, it's a reaction save. He's done tremendously well. Kivo, I feel like at times can get isolated, but the goalkeeper... He does a fantastic job here. It's a brilliant save because, you know, near post, I always believe keepers don't want to be beaten there. But he's nice and strong, stays nice and tall. But, yeah, you look at 
the you know, defence here. Is yeah, and, and then right. those results. Yeah. Look, there's the, the game against Manchester City where, where Arsenal don't score, but look how many goals they're putting in their column as well while keeping those clean sheets. That's title winning form. When you talk about winning away and keeping clean sheets, and that's what Arsenal always famed for for many years, and, and, and that's why it was such a a big one for them today and, and, then, and they've got to make sure they're going to be going to what's going to be a cauldron a cauldron on Sunday against Tottenham and they've got to make sure they defend in that manner don't panic and they're going to have to stay calm which is not going to be an easy thing in that environment but we look at those teams as well expecting them to win most of those games Bar City maybe but to score that amount of goals, you can sometimes switch off sometimes, and, but you don't get that with this team because they're constantly talking and constantly giving each other messages. And as well, you've got Mikel, who's definitely a lot laid back on the sideline, which then assures well, the defence. He isn't laid back on the sideline. Oh, line. he definitely oh. is. I feel like he is. I you, feel like he's, you think Mikel Arteta's laid back? I think he is, compared to last season. Yeah, I mean, okay. Sorry. Last sorry. season, yeah, he was like, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, it's definitely not. No, but um, I just feel like the experiences are from last year, yeah. from the mistakes they made yeah. at this time of the season, which cost them in the the lesser game, should we just say. I, don't, I can't see it this year at the moment, that's for sure. And he also has that, that leadership on the pitch of Martin Odegaard, who we spoke about earlier, who got the second for Arsenal. He's been talking to Natalie Gedra. Martin, well done. After a tough week of results, how big, what does it mean to get this win here? Tough win. Yeah, massive win for us. Um, yeah, so delighted. I think uh, it was a tough week for us. Um, a few tough results and uh, emotionally have been, have been really hard, you know, but um, yeah, we had to keep going and uh, today was all about bouncing back and, uh, and getting the win and, and we did, so yeah, really happy. Yeah, how was it to deal with all the emotions mentally coming to this match? It was tough. Yeah, it's, it's hard, you know, it's, um, it was a big disappointment. Uh, obviously, we wanted to go further in the Champions League and also the game before we lost, so um, it is hard, but uh, I think in football the good thing is you always get a new chance. and. And um, yeah, still a long way to go, and still tight in in the race. So, um, so yeah, today was all about getting back to, to business, and, and we did. And, and you fought hard. The first half, especially, they played very compact. It was hard to to find those passes, and especially the the, the decisions in the final third. What made it so hard uh, during this match? Yeah, I think it's a good team, uh, well organized, uh, physical team. You know, they defend well, and uh, and they made it hard for us. But um, yeah, we just had to keep on playing, and and we knew that uh, we were going to get the chance. And, and in the end the goal, so, so yeah, it was good in the end. And you pushed until the end, so how important was it to get that second goal? Because Wolves was, were still in the match. Yeah, um, it's always a bit tricky, you know, when you're 1-0 up. Um, we wanted to get the second one earlier, but um, again, it's a good team and we have to give them credit as well. But um, yeah, I don't think it was our best performance, but today it was all about the, the three points and, and we got them. Yeah, was it the case uh, of one of those days where you just needed a win, you needed the result more than a glowing performance necessarily? Yeah, I think three points was the key. Uh, that was the main thing. As I said, I don't think we played the the best game, but um, but yeah, we got the win and uh, and uh, and we're back now. So so that's good. And you got a goal as well. You mm. said finally, yeah. <laughs> you're pleased. Yeah, finally, it was about time. I've been I've been looking for the goal for a while now. So yeah, it was good to get it again. And you're back at the top of the table. So how does it feel? Well, finishing the week on the top of the Premier League because it really sends a message. Yeah, after a tough week, it's, it's obviously nice to finish on top. Uh, that's where we want to be. So, um, so yeah, that's good. And uh, we have to keep on fighting now. Um, yeah, push each other every day. We have to have to believe and we have to go for it. And then, uh, then we'll see. Well done, Martin. Thank you. After 45 minutes of action at Molyneux, it's Arsenal who lead Wolves 1-0. These are some of the numbers with 52% possession for the visiting side, 21% touches in the opposition box versus two. I think that shows dominance, including XG there. Uh, what are your thoughts, Karen, on the first well, 45? To be honest, I just saw what an excellent time to score from an Arsenal's perspective. You're right there, the stats have been more in their favour, but I still think they've had chances and there were half chances, but the goal was... Bit of a miss kick, if I'm honest, but it doesn't matter at this point of the season, especially from Arsenal, they needed a response. But the goal just before half time was brilliant for them, and also I felt it's kind of maybe crushed and knocked Wolves a little bit. So both team talks will be very different now because of that goal. Yeah, your thoughts, Martin, on what we saw? Relieved. Um, <laughs> Arsenal were missing lots of chances. Um, it's been a difficult week, and hopefully it'll end well. Um, but, you know, that settles them down a little bit now, but half time to go in, as you say, a lot more positive. But it definitely it was a shank off of Trossard. I don't think he really um, intends to put the ball in the back of that in that manner. But nonetheless, he takes it early, he takes it quickly. And it's a good, it's good play from Arsenal. There was a suggestion maybe Jesus might have made a little bit of a foul there. He gets up quickly and look, he just swings a foot at it. 
And it didn't have to be perfect. And it felt before this that every opportunity Arsenal got had to be perfection, had to be perfect, but not with this fella. It's been a revelation since he came to the club, the amount of goals he's got, the amount of assists. No one can get near him. I mean, value for money, we were talking about that earlier at Ross Barkley, but certainly the money we're talking about for him, 27 million, instead of Mudrick, who was the, uh, the other option. Look at this, look. It's just, I mean, it's beautiful to watch uh, from an Arsenal point of view, but uh, tough on Wolves, who I think have done really well in that first half. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Leandro Trossard having his best season in terms of goals in the Premier League. He's got nine joint top scorer with Kai Havertz, Bukayo Saka leading the way. They needed someone to just take control with so many half chances. And as Martin had said, needing to be perfect. He d- I'm going to start with you for this question because I already know Martin's going to say yes. Should Kilman have had a red card for this challenge on Havertz? He was shown yellow. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very late. It's high. Um, is there force? Not like there is force, so I think to be fair, there's definitely a conversation there. Is it's late, it's high, it's only going to be strong, he's got to be on it. And, possibly, you know, Gomez is in there, the and um, I think from this angle, maybe the next angle really you see maybe because his foot's I mean, going down. This one here feels like his foot's gone down, maybe why he's still on the pitch. But I always put myself in the position of if I was Kai Havertz. And I'd be fuming because you never want those type of tackles mm. coming in you. And he's, he's if I was still first. playing, Karen, if I was still playing, I'd make that kind of challenge. You'd feel, be saying feel, it wouldn't be a foul, I feel Martin. I'm lucky, I feel I'm lucky to still be on the pitch. But nonetheless, if that's consistency and we're going to see it through the game and something similar happens to a Wolves player from an Arsenal player and we get the same result, then that's fine. I just want consistency. So if, I don't want to see people sent off, but he was very lucky there to stay on. All right. Well, Arsenal stands. produced a professional away performance to claim a 2-0 win over Wolverhampton Wanderers to move to the top of the Premier League table. Declan Rice and Joe Al Gomez both threatened to score for their respective sides before Leandro Trossard opened the scoring on the stroke of halftime. Arsenal captain Martin Odegaard netted a late second to make sure of the three points and end a three-game winless run in all competitions. Although they have played a game more, Mikel Arteta's side will be pleased to be sitting one point clear of Manchester City and three points better off than Liverpool. 